Hello children. <laughs> Good to have you once again with us today. And I believe today's service is going to be a remarkable one because you're going to learn something and you're going to be blessed. I hope you enjoyed last week and every lesson you learned on gentleness, you are applying it to your lives. Today, we're still going to take our lesson further, you know, on the theme of the fruits of the Holy Spirit. So we have dealt with different fruits of the Spirit, which are nine of them. We've dealt with seven and two more is left. So today I'm going to add an extra one to it. But before we go on, let's have a word of prayer. Father, we thank you, we worship you, we bless your name. We thank you for giving us this opportunity to be in your presence once again, gathering us all around the world, O oh Lord, to learn of you. Have your spirit flow through this lesson today and touch every member of our audience in an amazing way in the mighty name of Jesus. Let no one that comes in contact with you today remain the same way in the precious name of Jesus. And even as we learn of you, O oh Lord, make better of us in the precious name of Jesus. Let our lives become better because we have learned of you in the precious name of Jesus. Let your life flow through us in the precious name of Jesus. We give you thanks, we give you glory. We pray with thanksgiving in Jesus' name. In the mighty name of Jesus we pray. So, before we go on with our lesson, as usual, we need to go into the presence of God with thankfulness, with gratefulness, with joy, with happiness, you know. The Bible says, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. And you have breath, you're breathing. You understand? You did not manufacture the oxygen you're taking out and the carbohydrate, carbo, sorry, I'm now saying carbohydrate, carbon dioxide you're giving out. It is God that made all that possible. It is God. The Bible says in him we live, we move and have our being. And for that, we need to give him all the praise. Therefore, get everything ready get yourself ready let's go praise god from the depths of our hearts and then we'll return to our lesson shortly see you
one, no one. I turn around, no one, no one. There's no one, there's no one like me. I walk, I walk. Hello children! <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome back. I'm sure you danced, you praised God, you gave him your highest praise. <laughs> Breathing so much praise out of your lungs to God. There is nothing we can actually give God but our praise. So I'm glad you did that. And God says in the Bible that he inhabits the praises of his people. In, in other words, he lives inside our praises. So when you praise God, you have just invited God into wherever you are. And you'll be blessed for that. So welcome back. So we're going to continue with our lesson on the fruit of the Spirit. We have been discussing different fruits of the Spirit. And I know you'll be wondering, fruit, of, you have thought about it, that fruit. Fruit is, 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 is the food a tree gives you know to us in our world to benefit you understand you have a mango tree for instance and it gives us the mango fruit you know, an orange gives us an orange fruit you understand so the same way the holy spirit living in us is like that tree and it bears fruits in our lives and those fruits are different and it starts with love it says joy peace different fruits you know so last week uncle victor spoke about the fruit of gentleness now today, I'm going to take it further. Today we'll be talking about the fruit of faithfulness. Faithfulness, what does that mean? Meanwhile, if I should ask you gentleness, have you been gentle? Know that if you have the Holy Spirit in you, it should bring out that fruit to the world. In other words, you wouldn't be in the place that, or you won't be a, the person that causes violence, that causes trouble you'll be gentle, you'll be bringing a calming, you know, atmosphere wherever you are. So today we're talking about faithfulness. Faithfulness. What does faithfulness mean? What does faithfulness mean? When they say someone is faithful, what does that mean? So I'm going to read to you a, a dictionary definition I got. And it says, faithfulness is a state of being steadfast in affection or allegiance firm in adherence to promises or in observance of duty in other words we can say you are faithful if you keep your word you are steadfast so you will not tell someone okay come tomorrow and i'll give you this thing and then when tomorrow comes the person comes in and say ah no i never said that to, oh oh sorry you know that shows you're not faithful you understand or you are expected, you know, to take care of your siblings, your brother, your sister, your younger one and all that. And then you abandon them and go out to play. That's being unfaithful. But if you stay with them because you have been given the assignment and you are committed to fulfilling it. And you stay with them, you make sure they have food, you make sure they do this. You are being faithful. You are displaying the character of being faithful you know and that is the fruit of the spirit one of the fruits of the spirit in us faithfulness faithfulness so you cannot have the holy spirit in you and not be faithful it's not possible because he will come into you and he will give you the capacity to be faithful by being faithful you will show care to others you will show care to the work or the assignments you have to do you will show care to you know your school work everything you know you, things will not suffer in your care so it reminds me of the a story in the bible about a faithful man a faithful man and that's joseph 
you know, the Bible talks about Joseph. We know how his story went, that his brothers were jealous of his dream and they sent him and they sold him into slavery, you know, and he got into, um, he got into Egypt, he was sold to, to merchants that took him to Egypt. And when he got to Egypt, he was bought, you know, as a slave for an Egyptian military officer whose name was Potiphar. So Potiphar took Joseph into his house. And then he said, after a while, Potiphar observed that he was blessed. His house prospered because, you know, of Joseph. And Joseph was found to be faithful. What does that mean? In other words, whenever Potiphar gave Joseph money, nothing happened to it. He was given money probably to go and buy something. He will buy it and bring it back and bring back the change. For some people, it's an issue. You know, they give you money. Oh, something is worth 350 naira, for, for instance, and they give you 500 naira. And they go. You go and you even buy the thing. And then you come back and you give stories. Ah, probably you lie about the change. Oh, that the money is no longer three. Whereas you bought it for 350. You lie and say, ah, no, it was, it's now 500 so that you could pocket the, the 150. That's not being faithful. But that wasn't the case for Joseph. He was faithful. For everything he did, he was found faithful. He kept everything according to how it was expected to be kept. That was it. He was faithful in all his dealings, you know. And he went on that way. He said because of him, because of how faithful he was, everything about his master's house prospered. And he got to a time that even his master's wife, you understand, saw something special about him because he was just faithful. And she entrapped him, created a false story, you know, around him and told her husband and they sent him to prison. So he went to prison, yet in prison. Imagine, you have, your freedom has been taken away. Wouldn't you misbehave? Yet Joseph went to prison and he was... <laughs> I could say he was the most faithful person because he went, he started solving problems in prison such that the prison guards or the, the, the chief custodian of the prisoners and all that, the warder that took care of all the prisoners handed over his assignment, his work to Joseph. Say, ah, today we'll decide what everybody will eat. So Joseph will more or less probably go into the kitchen, cook for everybody in the prison to eat. He will do everything. He will assign, oh, this one, we need to clean this place today. We need to do that. We need. He was faithful. He was faithful. All through his, this thing, he was faithful. So Joseph was faithful. Even in the prison, he was faithful. Everything he handled, you know, the everything that concerned the prisoners and all that. He was faithful to a point that he could spot when other people had issues and he helped them resolve their issues. They brought issues to him just because of how faithful he was. When being faithful, it also means you are reliable. People can rely on you. So he was that faithful. So he got to a point that people in the prison, you know, got to a, to a point of relying on Joseph. They brought their problems to Joseph. So there was Pharaoh's baker in the prison, you know, and his butler. Both of them had issues. They had dreams, you know. They had dreams that made them wonder what is all this about. And they brought the dreams to Joseph. And Joseph interpreted the dreams to them. As he did, you know, that's how everything played out according to how Joseph interpreted. So exactly how he interpreted each person's dream that's how it played out now the butler you know uh, and the cup bearer exactly as it happened so he made a statement to one of them which was the cup bearer yes he made a statement to the cup bearer say whenever you go please don't forget me but that one left when he went out of prison he was restored to his position as a pharaoh's cup bearer he did not remember Joseph. But two years after, the, the king, who is Pharaoh, had a dream. And in that dream, you know, he saw a lot of things. You know the story. And he was finding 
you know, it difficult to understand what the dream meant. And he was saying, oh, who can interpret this dream for me? That was when the cup bearer remembered Joseph and said, ah, when I was in prison, there was someone, oh, I had a dream and he told me about everything and everything played out that way. That is how they remembered Joseph from prison and Pharaoh sent for Joseph. And Joseph was brought out of prison and he was brought to rule over the land, you know, and all that. But Joseph's, you know, faithfulness, his reliability was seen all through because just as the, you know, butler, or sorry, the, the warder in the prison handed over the prison for Joseph to run, similarly, Pharaoh himself handed over the whole land of Egypt for Joseph to run because Joseph was, was faithful. Everything was given to Joseph just because he was faithful, he was reliable. How reliable are you? With the Holy Spirit in you, you have that fruit in you. It's for you to showcase it to the world. And I believe by God's grace, you will be doing that from here on. And since we are learning of the Holy Spirit and you are building a relationship with the Holy Spirit, that fruit of faithfulness will become evident in your life from here on. But before we go on, I would love, I would love for you to start at the starting point, which is having a relationship with Jesus Christ. Because you cannot have the Holy Spirit without accepting Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Now, if you would want that to be your experience, would you bow your head and say this prayer with me? In Jesus' name. Father, today I declare that I am a sinner, but I have relinquished all my past life to you and I lay down my life before you and I declare that you are now my Lord and my Savior. I give my life to you. I pray that you have full control over my life from here on in the precious name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. If you say that prayer, let me pray for you. In Jesus' name. Father, I pray that every little one, every child that has said that prayer, every preteen that has said that prayer, oh Lord, that you touch them in a marvelous new way, even as we welcome them into the family of God, O oh Lord. Make your blessings that make rich and add no sorrow become their experience from here on in the mighty name of Jesus, O oh Lord. And let their lives be filled with the Holy Spirit. And wherever anyone has not been faithful before, O oh Lord, the capacity to be faithful and reliable, let it be given them in the precious name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. It was a thing of joy to have you with us today. But before we go, let's take our memory verse. It's a popular, you know, verse of scripture. We read it last week. All through this series, we have been reading that verse. So our verse is taken from Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 and 23. It reads, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such, there is no law. I, I actually read that from the New King James Version. You would also see it listed in other versions as well. So you might see long-suffering, which is patience. It will be captured as patience in some other versions. So God bless you and thank you for being part of our service today we look forward to seeing you next week as we continue and gradually bring to a close this series of ours god bless you have a great week of being faithful bye for now